Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur Media and Yelp. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. In life and in the restaurant business, we learn through lessons and stories. Today's guest is the CEO of Toast, our primary sponsor for this show, Chris Comparado. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Hope you're having a good morning, bright and early on the West Coast. But uh, bright, thank you for bright having and me. early on the West Coast. Yes. So, uh, Toast is our primary technology partner at our restaurant, Acali Barbecue in San Diego. Um, Toast is the reason that we are able to put this show on with Entrepreneur and with Yelp. We are grateful for the stage. Chris, I'm going to ask you a random question to start the show. Where okay. in the world is your favorite stadium? stage or venue outside of the United States? So 2014 World Cup in Brazil. Brazil. I had a, I had a chance to go watch um, Brazil play Chile and it was in my prior software company and I went to uh, the quarterfinals of the World Cup. So there you go. There so you I, go. Would love to, I would love to do that again because okay, cool. um, I'm a big soccer fan and being on that, um, being on that uh, in the audience or in the stadium, yeah. That's that's where I'd love to do to be. So we're gonna we're gonna pretend we're gonna go back to Brazil and uh, we're gonna actually you and I are gonna figure out how to host the Spark event, Toast Spark event at Brazil. So we're gonna Let's get entrepreneur. It. We're gonna get all the people that listen to this podcast, all the people that are playing the game within the game for hospitality, and we're gonna put you right in the middle of the pitch. We're gonna give you 120 seconds to let us know, let the world know who is Chris Comparado and what is Toast. 120 seconds on the clock. Can you do it? I can do it. Uh, All right. Let me jump in. So I'm on the pitch and the game hasn't started yet. And maybe we're, um, you know, maybe we're the sponsor. Yes. Of, you know, the World Cup. And uh, everybody's like, who is toast? <laughs> so, um, well, welcome everyone to today's game. Before we jump into the game, I want to let you know that toast is a restaurant specific end to end platform that helps the restaurant community grow their revenue, streamline operations, and drive amazing guest experiences. Our mission at Toast is to empower the restaurant community to delight their guests, do what they love, and thrive. And our platform enables restaurant operators to deliver great guest experiences, whether it's ordering off-premise through online ordering, whether it's ordering takeout, whether it's having a tremendous dining experience within the restaurant, we enable restaurants to deliver these fantastic guest experiences. Um, doing what they love is all about freeing them up. We wanna make sure that we're freeing up your time and energy to do more of what you love. So not being stuck in archaic business processes or spreadsheets or jumping through different point solutions to figure out how your business is running, but really um, enabling technology to free you up and do more with less so that you could spend more time with guests, spend more time in the kitchen, maybe spend more time on your menu. And then Thrive is all about making sure that our platform is looking around the corner for what's coming next across the entire restaurant industry. So if we're doing our job, you know, we are your trusted technology partner to think about what the future of the industry and the community looks like so that you could be successful and thrive with, with digital technology at the heart of your business. So love there it. We go. I love it. We're ready to start. So international toast sponsored world cup. Here we are. Let's get <laughs> after it. Uh, we talk about lessons and stories and I'm going to you know, share a story with the listeners who, who maybe don't know our toast story. I'm wearing a toast hat. This is a toast sponsored podcast. There's no hiding our, our relationship with toast. And, you know, back in during the pandemic, actually, we met with Allison Malangoski, our local San Diego toast rep. And she introduced us to Will Eppard, who is also our regional rep. And they told us about all this incredible technology that we could bring into our, our restaurant. You know, our restaurant had been for 12 years using Aloha legacy point of sale system, but we were moving to the next generation. How could we start to do more third party delivery? How could we become digital first? How could we live the thesis that we truly believe in digital hospitality? And, you know, at that time, I told Will and I told Allie, 
you know, we are a barbecue media company. We are going to produce content about our toast experience, how we use hardware, how we use the software, how we use the KDS, how we use up and go pay. And, you know, they laughed, they go, you know, I, we don't believe you. We'll see it. We'll see it when the proof comes. And I told Will, you know, eventually I'm going to have Chris Comparato on the show. He goes, well, we'll see about that. And, you know, fast forward later on, we do an unboxing video, Eric, my general manager and myself, we make an unboxing video. I have lots of people, friends that see the content on Instagram. They see it on YouTube. They go, what are you doing? Making an unboxing video of your restaurant technology equipment. And what we said is why we host this show, why we hope that people that are listening to this show, no matter if you're listening on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're consuming it through podcasts, there's never been a greater time to share your story. And every single story, every restaurant owner, no matter what village you're in, no matter what city you're in, no matter what country you're in, you have a story. And technology is now enabling us, like you said, to share that story and to do the things that we love to do. So my question to you is, why is it so important for restaurant owners to have a technology first mindset? Well, if you take, if you zoom out, it's been a, um, it's an amazing industry, right? <clears throat> Amazingly diverse industry, um, you know, close to a million restaurants in the U.S. alone, uh, probably 20 million restaurants internationally. And the industry, um, has really um, been cemented in manual business processes, legacy technologies um, to run their business. And if you think about uh, the age that we're now in, where um, it's highly contextual, um, we as consumers have moved to a mobile economy um, and very much a digital first economy. So every stakeholder in this restaurant community and restaurant ecosystem is going through a transformation, Sean, and the transformation revolves around digital and how could a digital first mentality drive change, but that change can help optimize the experience. It could help optimize things like growing sales and revenue, optimize how you market, optimize how you run your business in the back office. So we look at every stakeholder in this restaurant continuum from the consumer and the guest to the front of house and the wait staff, to the manager and the owner, um, to the bartenders, to the kitchen, to the chef, to the accountant, and to the supplier. And we say, how can technology really enable their jobs to not just be easier and better, but to allow them to really thrive? And, and the premise is, if they, if they thrive, then the whole business can operate at the next level. And if you look at an industry that's traditionally driven five to 10 points profit margin, well then when digitally enabled and when they digitally transform, well then what's the potential? You know, Can we double profit margins? Can we triple pop profit margins? So those are the problems that we're constantly thinking about across this landscape, which is where can technology play an important part to transform for the better how restaurants operate. But we really look at each stakeholder to say, okay, what does the guest want? Well, the guest wants a contextual experience, you know, whether they're off premise or whether they're, you know, it sitting in Cali barbecue, yeah. you know, how do they leverage technology to interface with your brand and interface with your restaurant? You know, the wait staff wants technology to, turntables faster and offer you a, a, a better guest experience when you walk into the store. And maybe it's the kiosk, or maybe it's order and pay at the table, or maybe it's the Toast Go device that's allowing the wait staff to give you a great guest experience. The owner operator wants to get on the back end of Toast and look at their performance. And you know how is Cali Barbecue performing today? And what are some of the performance insights or the data insights that allow me to run a better restaurant? You know, should I turn on certain um, off-premise channels? Should I turn them off? You know, should I staff up tonight? It's a Friday night, should I staff down? So the owner operator needs to leverage uh, technology to drive performance. And I'd argue these types of use cases exist across 
each of these um, stakeholders, but it also means you need a backbone and an operating system that can sort of see the playing field from front to back and then serve up these solutions, you know, to, to allow them to thrive. So I remember early on when, when I, when we were running the restaurant and we weren't doing a good job and we were having trouble paying our bills. And I, my first subscription was to restaurantowner.com and it was a educational subscription for independent restaurant owners. And one of the things that really stood out to me was having a relationship with a primary food vendor, instead of having all these food vendors competing against each other, spending time pricing things out, you know, find a primary food vendor, find somebody that's going to help you build your business and scale your business. And we were very fortunate to find US foods and to lean into that. And now what I start to talk about is finding a primary technology partner, because there's so much change, so much rapid change. There's tech stacks are getting so complicated. Why is it so important for restaurants to have a primary technology partner? And why should that primary technology partner be toast? Yeah, it's a great, it's a, it, it's a good question. You know, I think at the end of the day, um, when you're looking to connect these dots across that value chain that I talked about, um, traditionally, if you look, if you zoom out across the past, you know, 10 to 20 years, often um, the solutions put in place would either be legacy solutions or point solutions. And as a restaurant owner, um, you would be forced to almost uh, act like a CTO or act like an engineering officer to figure out how to run your operation. We think it's important, um, and this is the, um, the premise of all in one, we think it's important to put a platform like Toast at the center of the picture and then build around it. And what I mean by that is build around a platform that has many of these capabilities from front to back that you need to be successful because then it is, um, then it is a single relationship that you could lean on and build with over time. No different than US Foods, like US Foods, you probably, rely on US foods for different assortments Correct. across the food ecosystem. For us, many restaurants depend on us to be that all-in-one backbone or all-in-one platform that stitches together these experiences. But that being said, um, if you have toast at the center of your ecosystem, then you also want some flexibility, number one, to make sure that toast is continuing to innovate and this platform gets stronger and stronger over time, You know, whether it be offering payroll like we did in 2019, and now we've en enhanced that employee cloud solution or offering supplier and accounting on the back end like we're doing with Extra Chef. So you want that platform to grow and thrive, but then you also want really strong what we call APIs so that it gives you flexibility to stitch in a different partner if you so choose to use a different vendor for some other unique solution. And then you're in really a strong position to leverage Toast, but then leverage this rich partner ecosystem to pick and choose from really good, you know, really great restaurant technology partners that are out there that you know, we're partner, partnering with actively today. So, so I think that's why it's important. Then if we do our jobs well, we're allowing you to focus on the restaurant operation. How do I market to my guests? How do I create loyalty am amongst my consumers? How do I run and streamline my operation? And then how do I spend more time thinking about my menu and how to drive a, a, a great menu experience? So, so I think it's, but, it, but it's really important for restaurants to think about what is that backbone solution? And we think Toast is a, obviously a great solution to have as your backbone, but then um, making sure we have strong APIs so that other partners can um, interface with the with the backbone uh, quite easily. Yeah, I'm happy that you talked about that. That was one of the big selling points for us was how many open APIs you have and how many partners you allow to come into the Toast ecosystem, even though you are developing products that, um, you know, are starting to solve those problems. But, you know, the ability to have seven shifts integrate as well as it does with, with Toast and, you know, so many of our other partners, it means so much to us. We talk about 
humans at the heart of technology. And whether it's a small tech company, whether it's a big tech company, whether it's a company that just went public, that's gone from reducing staff during the pandemic to how many, how many toasters are we at now? Are we over? Do we have a public number? Uh, we don't have a public number. But, 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 it's it's, few, but it's significantly it's more thousand, than 2000 toasters. It's, it's, <laughs> it's more than it was in 2020. It's more than it was in, 20, in 2020. I heard you on a podcast um, back in 2017 talk about your consulting days and your consulting days at the Ritz Carlton and the Marriott. And one of the philosophies, the driving philosophies was being a deep generalist. Why is that so important? And what is that something that you teach to the Toast team and make it one of the, the, the philosophies uh, moving forward? You know, it, it, it probably comes back to values. And, you know, what are the values that uh, drive your organization? And, um, you know, every company out there has different sets of values. And I think what's important to... Um, to me and to toast is we call it, you know, to lead with a hospitality mindset and leading with a hospitality mindset means that whatever business you're in, you have really deep empathy for your customer base. And, um, and in the food ecosystem and in the restaurant community, making sure that we have as much empathy for what it takes to run a restaurant of all different types or sizes or formats, that's critically important. So that connection point forces us to really relate to our customers so that we could listen, solve more problems, you know, be the best partner we can be to you guys. And it's, it's all about leading with that hospitality mindset, which is one of our core values. And, um, and that connection can lead one to become what I call a deep generalist. And you know, back in the 90s when I was in consulting, you know, I spent a couple of years with uh, with you know uh, consulting to Marriott resorts and hotels in Ritz Carlton. And one of the things I loved about uh, that time period was the connection point to hospitality. And at that time, it was really working with um, hotel chains to figure out how to take advantage of guest data so that hotels were offering these great guest experiences to consumers who were walking in the door. So, um, you know, no different than Ritz Carlton, knowing what you like and dislike, you know, can the average Marriott also know what you like and dislike? You know, do you want a, a king bed? Do you want two queens? Do you want a high floor? Do you want a low floor? What type of food do you like? What type of wine do you like? I now fast forward to toast. And um, that experience of being a deep generalist as a consultant in the 90s has served me really well because now within the restaurant community, which is all about hospitality, you know, we can apply the same practices to make sure that empathy is front and center with our customer base. And listen, you don't have to be a vendor in the restaurant ecosystem. You can be in some other business, but having this connection point to your end customers where you're listening, you're creating dialogues, you're trying to improve. You know, Sean, a half hour before this podcast, I was on a call with a customer back out here in the East, um, a mid-market brand in the pizza space. And I spent a half an hour chatting with them about um, you know, what's going well and what's not going well. And right after this podcast, I'm gonna circle back to, to our product team and say, yep. here's what I heard. And you know, here's what we're doing really well, but here's where we can actually up our game and make sure that they're having an even better experience. And, and one of the things is, if we're doing our job well for you as customers, then you're gonna serve your customers even better. So, yeah. I, so I look at this chain and, um, and it's all about going deeper into the business, having empathy, listening, and then sort of continuous improvement so that um, Cali Barbecue can operate uh, a better brand, but then you can serve your customers even better because of what we're doing. One of the most exciting products that I talk about a lot is the order and pay solution. And that's part of, because of the thesis of, of this show is, is smartphone storytelling. Every single customer that walks into any restaurant on earth has a point of sale in their pocket. 
And I know that you guys sell hardware, but uh, order and pay is something that we feel provides truly provides digital hospitality. It allows customers to have time back. The most valuable thing that we all have is time. And it's really transforming our entire industry because we're starting to rethink positions in the restaurant and rethink what are job titles in the restaurant. So much of what we care about is how do we give people what they want on their terms and really enabling people to have time back? And, you know, I'm a father, I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old and I go to restaurants locally. We support all the local restaurants here in San Diego. And when we go there, it's not, it's the frustration of knowing the technology is there. There are solutions there that can allow us to order our appetizers first or to pay when our kids start to get a little bit rowdy at the end of the night. What, what kind of focus does Toast have on these smartphone technologies and, and really empowering this digital hospitality? I think it starts with analyzing um, where we think the guest experience and the consumer experience could go. And it's highly contextual. Like Sean with his family, um, you know, at night trying to get out of the restaurant quickly may look a little bit different than Sean with his wife who wants to have a leisurely dinner and catch up and, and take your time. Sean on business may be on the go and, hey, listen, I want to order ahead and get moving quickly. Um, you know, Sean on the patio on a Saturday afternoon may want a great off-premise experience. So it starts with understanding where consumers are going and it's highly contextual. And then mapping that back to, is the restaurant in a strong position to deliver those experiences through technology? So, so that's the lens we take, which is, okay, well then we, not, we need to shape and bend toast so it meets the moment. Are we meeting the moment? for when Sean's on his patio? Are we meeting the moment for when Sean comes in with his kids? Are we meeting the moment when Sean's on a date? And are we meeting the moment maybe when Sean's fast flying on business? So the platform has to adapt and we need to make sure the platform is easy for the restaurant to say, okay, we can deliver different experiences by um, making sure these modules work together. So what's a good example? Say the wait staff is carrying the Toast Go device. Well, you can complement the Toast Go device with order and pay at the table. And that allows um, you know, the family that's using order and pay at the table to put in their social order. But guess what? If they're slow, the wait staff can pick up that order on the Toast Go device and finish it out. And we call it a steps of service methodology where these tools are actually complementary. They're not just one single you know, bespoke tool. They actually work in conjunction with each other so that the restaurant can really adapt it to the type of experience they're looking for. But listen, I, I actually think we're in the early days of um, order and pay at the table solutions. And I think over time, you're gonna see it um, get better and better, both for the restaurant operator to adapt to these situations, but then also for the consumer to feel like no matter what context they're in, like they had a wow, delightful experience. Last week on vacation, you know, I was I was in Disney for a few days with my family, and um, and you know when you use the Disney app, and then you have a Disney experience, whether you're in a restaurant or you're walking around or whether you're ordering ahead on your phone, um, restaurants should have the 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 um, the power to offer a Disney experience to their guests. So I start to think about that and I say, okay, let's make sure the platform can adapt to these different, um, uh, different uh, consumer experiences. And it's all about being digital first, but making sure that those digital first solutions like order and pay at the table or even the Toast Go device um, are nimble and uh, we allow the restaurant to configure them easily. Well, Chris, we are grateful uh, that you took the time. You can find Chris on Twitter at Chris Comparado. You can find him on LinkedIn. 
Toast is the primary sponsor of this show. We are grateful that you're helping us share stories all over the globe to restaurant owners, operators, hospitality professionals, people that want to play the game within the game. There's an incredible opportunity right now to, to be a part of this, this new rising tide of, of hospitality. And uh, we're grateful that Toast is leading the way and that you're enabling customers like us to do things that we love to do, like share stories and lessons like this. So thank you so much, Chris. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. Had a lot of fun and look forward to seeing you soon. Absolutely. Stay curious, get involved, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, please uh, follow the show, share it with a friend, and uh, we look forward to talking to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to Restaurant Influencers. If you are looking to improve your digital hospitality and you would like to learn more about what Toast has done for many of the guests on this show, like Sam the Cooking Guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Matt Horn, they all have trusted Toast to be their primary technology partner, just like we did at Cali Barbecue. When we struggled with online ordering during the pandemic, we knew that we needed to switch from Aloha to Toast. Toast helped us with online ordering. They helped us with loyalty. They helped us with gift cards. Guests can order food when they want on their terms and they can pay from the table. If you want to learn more, DM me at Sean P. Walchef on any social platform and I will get you in touch with the right people at Toast to help scale your restaurant brand.